The SCP Foundation has faced a number of wide, potentially apocalyptic threats in its mission to uphold normalcy and save humanity. We know the SCP Foundation could be ruthless in this mission. The events of SCP-5000 before Agent Pietro restarted the universe show what happens when the Foundation is pushed to its final decisions regarding normalcy being upheld. In SCP-5000, it seemed that the SCP Foundation decided to seize research further into the anomaly they needed to neutralize. But what would have happened if they didn't? In any case, we know the SCP Foundation is dedicated to normalcy and the containment of the anomalous. But what happens when the SCP Foundation is faced with a dire decision? Uphold normalcy or destroy their universe? The multiverse is a concept in science fiction that has gained mass amounts of popularity over recent years, especially recently thanks to a certain wall crawlers movie. Multiverses are parallel universes that are similar or extremely different from the main ones. Scientists have pondered over the existence of a multiverse for hundreds of years, with the most popular being the many worlds interpretation, a theory of quantum mechanics that states there are many worlds that exist in parallel at the same space and time as our own. Some interpretations even state that every decision a person makes causes a branch in reality where the person made the other decision. We're familiar with the SCP Foundation's run-ins with the multiverse, from SCP-2935-0 Death, a cave that allows the Wanderer to enter a parallel dimension that's fully and completely dead, only for the same thing to happen to their own world once they return through the cave, or SCP-1437, a hole that allows the Foundation to send, receive, and read parallel dimensional documentation from other multiversal SCP Foundations. Combine those two concepts with an SCP-001 proposal. The importance of an SCP-001 proposal is not lost on the Foundation. Researchers of the SCP Foundation save the SCP-001 slot for only the most dangerous, apocalyptic, or widespread anomalies that could affect the Foundation itself, humanity, and normalcy. Arbolic's SCP-001 proposal and the research within its file found the answer to the question we posed above. When the SCP Foundation is faced with a dire decision, do they uphold normalcy or destroy their universe and all the people who live in it? The file begins somewhat different from what we're used to with SCP Foundation files. Instead of an item number or containment procedures, we begin with a yellow notice from the Records and Information Security Administration, or RASA for short. The notice states that the following file was received in 2026 from Dimension R42. Is Dimension R42 potentially the cause of SCP-001? Could they be attacking this version of the SCP Foundation? The notice continues with the description of the file that follows it. It states, the file below describes an anomaly threatening all members of humankind in all of the multiverse. This file had been emitted to this version of the SCP Foundation for eight minutes as an extremely dangerous cognito hazard, classified as a Class V cognito hazard capable of easily destabilizing and penetrating this universe. However, it was found to not be dangerous, only reading as a danger level zero. While this Foundation was unable to quickly counteract this cognito hazard, it appeared to not pose a threat to the affected universe's humankind. Part of this notice is crossed out, indicating that it is no longer true. There is a high threat of repeated cognito hazardous or other forms of attack from Dimension R42. Instead, this part has been replaced with the following fact. Dimension R42 no longer exists. Did this version's SCP Foundation fall to SCP-001? Their entire universe no longer exists, so perhaps this file that this dimension's SCP Foundation received could be a potential warning. Under this race and notice, the reader is not greeted with the standard Foundation documentation yet again. Instead, it seems that the original senders of this file left a note for the readers of this file. It says, Greetings. You are reading this dossier in a paradimension of the relict dimension R42. Due to the colossal size of your world's address, for your convenience, your dimension will be hereafter referred to as PD. Paradimensions? It seems as though we're reading this SCP-001 file through the eyes of the SCP Foundation in this so-called paradimension. 
So if the original SCP Foundation and their universe, R42, is now destroyed, what does this mean for us? The note continues. The following message has been constructed by the SCP Foundation of the Relic Dimension R42 and is addressed to the SCP Foundation of Paradimension PD. Enclosed you will find information about SCP-001, which is a threat to the multiverse. Here we go. SCP-001 is definitely the cause of R42's destruction, but how can we be so sure of this? Maybe SCP-001 caused the Foundation to destroy their universe. The note also includes the following statement. As you may have noticed, this message was preceded by a burst signal containing a non-dangerous cognito hazard. The burst signal was constructed in such a way that minimal change to the signal would have caused indiscriminate and overwhelming casualties among the denizens of PD. As you can see, R42 is capable of eliminating the absolute majority of PD denizens, but has not exercised this capability. In the context above, we ask you to consider this action not as an act of aggression, but as a demonstration of the fact that R42 has no pretension for conquest or other forms of aggression towards PD. Take the following information in earnest. Well, at least this version of the SCP Foundation is being somewhat friendly with the paradimension. If R42's SCP Foundation needs to quell this multiversal threat though, why are they leaving it up to an SCP Foundation that may not be so inclined? The SCP-001 file begins with the object class. This anomaly is of the joint class of Paradox Apollyon. We know from SCP-001 when day breaks, or SCP-3999, that Apollyon class anomalies are extremely dangerous, posing an immediate and almost unstoppable threat to normalcy the SCP Foundation, all of humanity, or even the universe itself. The paradox part is interesting. What exactly is paradoxical about an Apollyon class anomaly? A footnote explains this for us. This anomaly's distinguishing feature is that, in order to eliminate the anomaly that will inevitably eliminate mankind, it is imperative to eliminate mankind or release another K-class event. Oh boy. It seems that the SCP Foundation of R42 was not eliminated by SCP-001. They eliminated themselves to contain SCP-001. Is this paradimension faced with this decision now? The containment procedures of the SCP file continue on this note. The only way to contain SCP-001 and prevent a ZK-class cross-reality failure event is the annihilation of humankind. K-class scenarios are not a concept used lightly by the SCP Foundation. We're familiar with the Omega K-class scenario when we are completely rid of death, or XK-class end of the world scenarios, so we know the danger these anomalies hold to humankind, normalcy, and the world. The SCP Foundation will do anything to prevent these scenarios from occurring, apparently even including the elimination of all humankind or entire universes. The description goes more in depth on the SCP-001 anomaly. SCP-001 consists of all living members of the Homo sapiens species living within dimension R42 and the paradimension, or PD for short. It seems as though this anomaly was created out of a mistake from dimension R42 and PD. As the description states, the anomaly first came into existence and developed in the relic dimension R42 and later activated in PD by accident. How could this have happened? Are these dimensions linked much more closely than we first thought? Let's continue with the description to find more information. Scarily, this portion of the description contains a note that states that unchecked growth of SCP-001 will cause the annihilation of the entire multiverse. The SCP foundations of Dimension R42 and PD are not met with this decision, as now the entire multiverse is at risk. The R42 SCP Foundation has done immense research on the topic of the multiverse of their universe. After the Big Bang, a finite number of universes were created, only 57 to be exact. However, only one dimension was able to form humanity, Dimension R42, and it's unknown why this happened. But all we know is that with the destruction of R42 and the potential annihilation of PD, humanity will cease to exist in the multiverse. The danger of SCP-001 
is that it has the anomalous capability for wide-scale replication of paradimensions. We are reading this article from one of these paradimensions, so this SCP Foundation is technically an anomaly that must contain itself. A paradimension is defined as a parallel reality that has an extremely small deviation from its parent dimension. In this case, PD is a paradimension of R42. It seems that these paradimensions form as a result of human decision-making. So if you've ever been between a type of shirt to buy or were confused on an exam and guessed a question, a paradimension could have formed from this decision, where the paradimension has you take the other choice. Because of this, dimensions housing living instances of SCP-001 uncontrollably grow a colossal number of minimally differing paradimensions every second. No sign of paradimensions have been found in the other 56 parent dimensions. The picture on this file shows how PD has branched from R42, but at this point, it seems that millions if not billions or trillions of paradimensions now exist. The real problem of paradimensions is that the multiverse has a limit on the number of paradimensions that can exist, and once that is crossed, the ZK-class cross-reality failure event will begin, and the multiverse will be destroyed. The R42 Dimensions SCP Foundation has also discovered that once humankind emerges in the paradimension, they can begin to have paradimensions themselves. The ZK-class cross-reality failure event can be expected to begin between 4 to 2 months from the PD receiving this message. To summarize, SCP-001 is humankind specifically its decision-making. When a person makes a decision, a paradimension may be created. The multiverse has a limit on the number of paradimensions it can have, and since paradimensions can have paradimensions, they are quickly approaching the ZK-class cross-reality failure event. The SCP Foundation of R42 is approximately 17 years ahead of PD, which allowed them to research and develop containment procedures to contain the anomaly and save the multiverse. R42's SCP Foundation discovered SCP-001 five years before writing the file we're reading now. Aside from that, they developed two operations, Castling and Minimal Gain, to slow paradimension creation and prevent the ZK-class cross-reality failure event. In Stage 1 of Operation Minimal Gain, the Foundation began with neutralizing and decommissioning all of their contained anomalies under the classification of Euclid or Keter, specifically those that were expensive to contain or requiring high levels of personnel and researchers. Stage 2 saw Operation Castling be commenced. The R-42 SCP Foundation launched rockets with variant C Global Amnestic Dispersing Warheads and took control over all countries in order to hold power over all humankind. In Stage 3, the Foundation began to move their world to a more natural state destroying all hazardous, radioactive, chemical, and bacteriological objects, removing dams, and stopping oil extractions. During Stage 3, Stage 4 began. The R42 SCP Foundation began eliminating humanity in third world countries by use of viral and biological attacks. Stage 5 was a wider spread attack on humanity, where the SCP Foundation added deactivation-resistant viral agents to water treatment and collection plants, food products, medication, and household items of developed countries. By Stage 6, only 0.1% of humanity remained, and they were targeted with drone strikes or put into concentration camps for elimination. Stage 7. Of the remaining survivors, the Foundation sampled them to find the fittest of those left to preserve humankind. Stage 8 saw 15,000 of these people put into indefinite cryosleep, and the remaining survivors were eliminated. Stage 9 saw the destruction of the remaining SCP Foundation personnel. We move on to a list of proposals that were made before or during Operations Castling and Minimal Gain. Proposals rejected include the use of SCP objects or other technologies to eliminate derivative dimensions, the development of nanobots with the capability to control human decision-making capabilities and eliminate variability, full replacement of humanity with bionic hybrids acting explicitly within standard behavioral models, unification of humanity into a neural network with control given to an AI control unit, and the destruction of Earth and or all of its inhabitants. While most of these seem like clear solutions that would prevent the elimination of humanity at the SCP Foundation's hand, these proposals were all rejected for one reason. The SCP Foundation did not 
have enough time. One proposal was accepted, however, the use of SCP-0000. This appears to be the solution the R-42 SCP Foundation concocted to fight SCP-001 and potentially save the multiverse. It poses the question, if the R-42 SCP Foundation used this same anomaly to contain SCP-001, as proven by the fact they no longer exist, will PD do the same? The file explains that the R-42 SCP Foundation opened a dimensional wormhole into PD, as they do not know at the time if paradimensions could cause the creation of more paradimensions. In doing this, the SCP Foundation seemingly infected PD with the ability to create paradimensions. The author of this file goes on to explain that the R-42 SCP Foundation had plans to attack PD and use Operations Castling and Minimal Gain in the dimension. However, they could not access the dimension again, and they believe that the Foundation personnel of PD would have made use of Thaumiel class anomalies to save themselves and their world. A note from R-42's Overseer Council is left for PD. If the Apollyon destruction was not enough, the Overseer Council is involved. The importance of the neutralization of this anomaly cannot be forgotten, so the Overseer Council explained to PD. The world has existed before us and must remain after us. Our multiverse is ill, and the name of the illness is humanity, SCP-001. The only way out is SCP-0000 will cease to become a threat with its help. It is in our power to leave a chance for other sapient species that, perhaps, will not be affected by the same anomaly, or will find a way to get rid of it before it's too late. We, the O5 Council, and other survivors from R42 have chosen our fate. We hope you will do the same. What is this SCP-0000? How did the SCP Foundation of R42 find this solution? The file for SCP-0000 is placed within this SCP-001 file. SCP-0000 is a Paradox Thaumiel class anomaly without any containment procedures. SCP-0000 is a device that, once activated, will destroy the universe it was activated in. It will also destroy all paradimensions that are not creating other paradimensions. As such, PD would not be destroyed. However, the billions or trillions of other paradimensions the R42 parent dimension created will be destroyed. PD is left with a harrowing decision to continue living, or destroy itself, to save the rest of the multiverse. In the file, a note from R42's Joan Simpson is written for an SCP Foundation Overseer, 05-1. As part of Operations Castling and Minimal Gain, the remaining Foundation employees were allowed one family member to uphold morale. Joan is not writing for R42's 05-1. Instead, she's writing for PD's 05-1, this dimension's version of her father. She begins with wondering whether she can call this version of 05-1 her father, as her version of her father recently passed away. She remembers the day the Foundation employees were allowed to choose that one family member they would save for the time being. Her father was opposed to allowing two family members, as he claimed it would cause unnecessary stress and schisms among the remaining few hundred Foundation staff. 05-1 chose to have Joan over her mother, and she understood everything by the look in his eyes, and grew angry, but that feeling is long gone now. She began to work with her father and the remaining Foundation personnel that called themselves hostages behind the backs of those higher up the ranks. On days she felt sad, Joan and her father would go up to the surface of the earth in hazmat suits, sitting on the grass and watching over the empty city at the bottom of the mountain. No humanity remained with the only life she could see being birds. Her father promised her that they'd return there and build a giant monument to humanity at the center of the city. She knew this was a lie. Joan remembers when someone proposed that they should open a portal, the one that opened to PD. This was their fatal mistake, as after that the paradimension began replicating paradimensions. The countdown went down to months again and the promise he made to his daughter became impossible. 05-1 died and left the position vacant. 
Joan says to the PD's 05-1 that she doesn't care whether they destroy their world or not, or whether the universe will continue to exist, or if there will be new life in it. Her world was crushed long ago. The note also reads the following. It's good that this message is encrypted with your key that was passed on to me, or these lines would have been deleted. Everyone wants to save the world, but who needs it like this? Empty and cold, without those to appreciate its beauty, without humanity, do whatever you think is right. I truly feel better now. Love you. Faithfully yours, Joan Simpson. We're not too sure if PD went through with destroying their universe to save the multiverse, but it seems that whatever decision was made would cause the destruction of that universe, whether that be through the use of SCP-0000 or the ZK-class cross-reality failure event, humanity will cease. But maybe if they make the decision to use SCP-0000, sapient life can begin to exist again, and hopefully, no paradimensions will be made from their decisions. Decisions are an extremely innate part of humanity. You decided to get out of bed this morning. You decided to open up your computer or phone, and you decided to watch this video. Who knows the amount of paradimensions we may have created today. But in our world, we're not at risk. But in the SCP Foundation's universe, anything can be anomalous. Even humanity. Now go check out SCP-507 Reluctant Dimension Hopper and SCP-2935 O-Death for more multiverse madness and explanations.